Hello and welcome again to Kemen 3. Let's go inside and take a look at today's lesson. We look at this three-part question from the November 2017 exams. We're going to be applying three important concepts. These concepts all belong to topic one of IV chemistry, stoichiometry. We look at the ideal gas equation. PV is equal to nRT. When you use this equation, you typically have pressure given as kilopascals and volume given as dm cube. And because all of these relationships here are true, it's possible to directly multiply kPa by dm cube and to use these units for the gas equation. If volume is stated in meter cube and pressure is stated in pascals, then a similar kind of multiplication can happen. But if there's any other combination, then it's very important that you do the required unit conversions before solving. Another important application is this one. The fact that one mole of an ideal gas at standard temperature and pressure occupies 22.7 dm cube. And then we also use conversions of mass to moles and moles to mass. And we look at the fact that the empirical formula is the simplest ratio of the number of moles of each of the elements in a molecule. For instance, C6H12O6, glucose, has an empirical formula C1H2O1. Usually the one can be omitted, which means that the ratio of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen in moles is a ratio of one is to two is to one. And these conversions here, students tend to be quite familiar with them, but it's convenient to arrange it into this little triangle so that you would recall all of the possible conversions. It's important also when you use these conversions to understand how the units cancel. And this is shown here. So now we're ready to look at this question. Menthol is an organic compound containing carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Complete combustion of menthol, 0.195 grams of it, produces this much carbon dioxide and this much water. Determine the empirical formula of the compound. We're going to have to find the number of moles of carbon and hydrogen and oxygen in menthol so that we can then determine its empirical formula. But you should not let the fact that menthol is combusted in oxygen to confuse you. Menthol burns in oxygen, producing carbon dioxide, water, and menthol has this general formula. You know that because you are told that it contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So here in our notebook, the first thing that we do is we find the number of moles of carbon. And to do this, you use this equation. The number of moles is equal to the mass in grams divided by the molar mass. To find the number of moles of carbon in the sample of menthol, you take this, the amount of carbon dioxide formed, divided by this, the molar mass of carbon dioxide, which you can find from using your periodic table. And because every one mole of carbon dioxide contains one mole of carbon, then you can say that you have this many moles of carbon. And then using this answer, you can then use another relationship. The number of moles multiplied by the molar mass gives the mass in grams. And using that relationship, where this value comes from the periodic table, you get 0 0.1225 grams for the amount of carbon in the sample. A similar thing follows for hydrogen, but there are two moles of hydrogen in one mole of water. So you divide the mass of water formed as given in the question by the molar mass of water, and you have to multiply that by two because there are two moles of hydrogen in one mole of water. And that comes to this value. Here again, we multiply this number of moles by the molar mass of hydrogen, and we get this mass for the mass of hydrogen in the sample of menthol. Now that you have the mass of hydrogen and the mass of carbon, then you can put both of these together to solve for the missing mass of oxygen, because you're told that this is the starting mass of menthol. And now that you know that this is the mass of carbon and that's the mass of hydrogen, you can solve for the mass of oxygen. Once you've gotten the mass of all three components, then you have to go back and look at the number of moles of each substance. And you've already calculated the number of moles of carbon and hydrogen. So you then convert the amount of oxygen into moles, again, dividing this mass by the molar mass 
of oxygen you get this many moles of oxygen and once you have the number of moles of each element in the sample then you can look for the simplest whole number ratio between these multiplying each of these by a thousand to make the inspection easier we do that and we get these values and we see that this comes to an approximate ratio of 1 to 20 to 10 10 carbons 20 hydrogens and 1 oxygen so this then is the empirical formula of menthol the simplest ratio that we can have where you have whole numbers to express the number of moles of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen. Building upon this, a 0.150 gram sample of menthol was then vaporized and it had a volume of this many dm cubed at this temperature and this pressure. And this is where we will apply the ideal gas equation. And to solve this question, you first solve for the number of moles and then you will use this relationship which plugs in the mass given divided by the number of moles that you solve for here based on the volume given and the conditions given. So if this is the molar mass of menthol and you have the ratio of carbon and hydrogen and oxygen, then it's possible to solve and to get the molecular formula from the empirical formula. We know that it has a molar mass of 156 grams per mole. And we know that the ratio of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen is 10 to 20 to 1. So using the molar mass of carbon, which is approximately 12, and hydrogen, which is 1, and oxygen, which is 16, then we realize that this empirical formula would have a molar mass of 156. So therefore, it means that the molar mass given for menthol is the same as the mass in the formula. So it means that this empirical formula is the same as the molecular formula. And the molecular formula for menthol is C10H20O. Now I'd like you to have a try at this question.